In this video, we're going to be talking about diagnosing somatic dysfunctions in the thoracic region. Now, this is used a lot in OMM. As you can imagine, the back is a common complaint. And this is also a concept that's commonly tested. So if you're in the thoracic region and you're looking for somatic dysfunctions, what you want to do is palpate the spinous processes, which I've highlighted a couple of them on the skeleton. This is the coolest app. I think everybody should get this app. So I've highlighted these transverse processes in the thoracic region, and I don't know why there's these two things in the air, but anyways, this is where you want to be palpating in the thoracic region for somatic dysfunction, and really what you're looking for is rotation. So basically, what do I mean by rotation? Let's reset this. If you're in a neutral position like this, and let's say one transverse process is more palpable on the left and the only way that you could feel something like that more on the left side is if this guy was rotated more towards the left. Now the thing is in the thoracic region you want to evaluate for rotation both in flexion and let's get rid of these ribs. So you want to be evaluating rotation both in extension going this way and in flexion going this way and the whole time what you're doing is palpating along these spinous processes as long as you can feel for some kind of asymmetry between both sides. So let's figure out how to name different dysfunctions in the thoracic region through some examples. So let's pretend we're looking at the back of the skeleton kind of at an angle and these are the transverse processes that you're palpating and let's pretend this was an example of a skeleton that was in the neutral position. So we'll write Whoa, so we'll write neutral. Let's say you find one prominent transverse process that you can actually feel when you're palpating, when you're going from, you know, however you're palpating. I don't know why I drew that line. Let's say you find a prominent process. What's your next step? You want to clarify what it's actually doing. And so instead of being in the neutral position, now we want to check these in flexion and we want to check them in extension. Now let's say in this example that we asked the patient to flex, suddenly it felt normal during flexion. Then we ask the patient to extend and when they get to full extension, we notice that this actually gets worse. And so how do you make that diagnosis? So let's say that that level that we were at was thoracic level four. We found that in the neutral position, the left transverse process was rotated to the left and we found that it got better aka it became more even during flexion and during extension the left transverse process became more prominent so the standard that everybody agrees on is they say we should name it based on what it likes to do and so at the t4 level it's better during flexion so i have the first part of my diagnosis is i know that at the t4 level it's going to be flexed. Now, what else is it going to be doing? Well, first of all, let's remember that we found this issue after we palpated along the entire area at one spinous level. So what kind of motion is that going to be if it's just involving one vertebral level? That would be considered type 2 motion. Because if you remember, type 1 motion involves multiple vertebral levels. And there's a couple of different things that would suggest that this is type 2 motion. First of all, there's flexion that's involved. Automatically has to be a type 2 motion because in type 1 motion, we were saying that it has to be in the neutral position, so it cannot be a type 1 motion. For questions and the complex and all the, uh, anytime this is tested, usually it's tested in the setting of type 2 motion. Since this is type 2 motion, and since the rotation is on the left, which we discovered upon palpation, we can therefore conclude that side bending is also on the left, and that'll direct our treatment. Things are named for what they like, and in order to diagnose, we have to describe all axes of motion. And when we're talking about the axes of motion, we're talking about flexion, which we're seeing here. We're talking about extension, which is this motion. We're talking about side bending, which is this, in this case, this skeleton is side bending to the right. And we're also talking about rotation. And that's along a vertical axis. I don't know how to make this app do rotation, but 
Rotation is just rotating, and it's along a vertical axis.